Hi everyone, Nick here at 45 Degrees Sailing. Today I just wanted to show you a little bit about how we dock at the Riva or the marinas here in Croatia. Today we're on the island of Vis. Uh, this is right in between the two ports, Luka Vis, and behind me here is Kut. Kut is a port we're going to go today. We spent the night on the mooring and now we're just really enjoying our time in the day and we're going to head onto the dock for some power and water and all that sort of stuff. So, things to remember when you are mooring here in Croatia. <music> To remember on your checklist when we are preparing to come into dock. First of all, all of your fenders out. Um, figure out the best way to do this is when you get to your boat, see how the fenders are laid out on your boat when it's at dock and remember that. Now it may not be the best but you've just got to work with this through the week to see where your fenders shall sit. We spread ours from the stern up to about just past midships. Okay, she's quite a long boat, this is 59 feet so most boats we're docking against that's where the impact's going to be. Making sure we have a fender at the widest point. Next, fender height. This is all going to depend on what you're coming in next to. Now I generally, rule of thumb, when we set up, I set up the fenders so the top of the fender is just above the tow rail, like this. Next thing, all fenders are done, okay. We have the fender on the stern as well. You often get a ball fender like this. This is on the stern so that if you do come back into the dock, it's gonna protect you from hitting it right at the back there. So make sure that is at the right level for the dock, which is usually just above the waterline. Lastly, make sure your stern lines are prepared and not tangled. This is huge. So often we see boats come into the dock and they've got no stern lines ready or they're still coiled up on the side, nice and neat, but that's not ready. So please, bring them in. I'll show you how we do ours. Now, I set up mine these days, especially with a long stern line with figure of eight, so it comes right around from the cleat, around the outside and then into the back of the boat. Figure of eight coils there and then three loops in my hand. So by doing these figure of eight coils down here, the line runs out and around the boat and it's clear of any obstruction so it's going to go straight to the dock guy without catching anything. Then, these figure of eight coils stop it looping inside each other and catching when he pulls the extra line through. Really important that you have this all organized before you get to the dock. And the reason I'm only taking these three loops in my hand, we back up quite close to the dock when we throw to the dock guy. You don't want to hand him a whole rat's nest of rope. He's just going to have to find the end in order to feed it through the ring on the dock. So, just by throwing a short amount, three, four loops in your hand, he can get that end of the line, and then all of this is going to run out clean. Also, make sure your thrusters are down and ready. If you're on a boat that has bow thrusters, then make sure they're down, all ready to go, and test them to make sure they're working. Now, we plan to dock not using too much thruster because you'll burn down your batteries. Really important when docking like this, we have lazy lines that run out to the bow lines um, for the moorings. Now there's a lot of things that can get caught in your thrusters and in your propeller. So make sure you're aware of where these lines are and when you're using power. To the uh, up to the river or the marina or whatever, make sure that if it's a marina, you're radioing in. Yes, my name is Super Trooper. Or if you are 
coming up to the lever that you get the attention or the dock guy is there to help you and direct you where to put your boat. Okay, remember you need to follow his direction, otherwise you're gonna mess with his system. He may choose to put you in a particular position because those are the places he needs to fill first. Now the biggest thing that's going to affect us is going to be the wind. So you need to take that in consideration early on in your docking and make sure that you set up a long way out. Now we're generally reversing into these docks so it's good to get a long uh, run up so that you can get in control and reverse nice and early. The man on the dock is going to pull up what's called the lazy line or the mooring line in order for our bow person to hook that or your crew to hook that line and take it towards the bow to tie the front of the boat. You need to follow his direction as you approach to make sure you're getting it on the correct side. coming in on a bit of an angle today because the line off the catamaran has quite an angle this way and I don't want to hook it with either my heel or my rudder. Film. Once I've got my stern line hooked on and cleated off, I can motor against it with the forward propulsion of the boat and then I can control the boat with the steering and the bow thrust. Now what I do is I slip out a little bit further in order for my bow person to not have to work so hard in pulling the boat out, especially when it's this big. You good babe? Okay. Uh, two lines or one? Uh, only one? Okay. So once we're secured on the bow, they can have a turn around the cleat and release it as we reverse against it. Ready to ease? Ready to ease? There's no space for the memory card though. Okay then. I'll give you as much as I can here. Ready to ease, babe? Easing? Hold. Okay, holding. At this point, we've got both of our stern lines on and our bow line is held in position. Now I'm gonna pull against the boat in reverse to give it a bit more power to know how much it's gonna stretch if we got more wind. You're good, lock up.
Once we've finished that, we can go to neutral and see how the boat's going to sit at the dock.